Today's on Seminary podcast episode is brought to you by Church Community Builder. I love how these guys help church leaders make and grow disciples by providing software and coaching focused on improving operational effectiveness. Church Community Builder provides leaders like me with insights into engagement of our church community, helping us close the gaps that allow people to slip away unnoticed. Visit churchcommunitybuilder.com to learn more. Welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. Are you looking for practical ministry help to drive your ministry further, faster? Have a sinking feeling that your ministry training didn't prepare you for the real world? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others in pursuit of stuff that we wish they had taught in seminary. Buckle up and let's get started with this week's Unseminary Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to the Unseminary Podcast. My name's Rich, the pot, the host around these parts. So glad that you've decided to spend some time with us today. We are so honored and privileged to have Daryl Telefero be with us. And Daryl is the executive pastor at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Church that started in 1866. Uh, the current pastor, uh, senior pastor there, uh, is Joseph Walker. He started in 1992 with just 75 people. The church has grown to 22,000 people today. It's a great ministry, a fantastic church, and we're just excited to have you on the show today, Daryl. Thanks so much. Glad to be here, Rich. Why don't you give us kind of a bit of the flavor of your church? What would people experience if they came uh, this Sunday? Well, Mount Zion is a very high energy uh, church. We believe in praising God and worshiping God. Mm -hmm. We believe in the spirit of liberty. Uh, we believe the Bible is true. When the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. So you'll, ex you'll experience uh, worship, dancing, a great word, and just a good family atmosphere. Mm, very cool. Now, what's your role there? You're the executive pastor, right? What does that What does that encompass at your church? Well, uh, the executive pastor is like the second second chair leader, mm -hmm. the person who's responsible for the administration, the person responsible for ministry oversight, ensuring that the vision of the senior pastor is realized and trickled down through various components of the ministry. Very cool. Now that obviously, uh, you know, in any church is, is, can be difficult. Obviously a part of what we're trying to do is to implement the vision that we believe God's given the senior pastor, the senior leader at our church, but in a growing ministry like yourselves, I'm sure that that, you know, has its, you know, some unique challenges to it. Why don't we explore that a little bit? How do you go about kind of ensuring that you're, that you're aligned with your uh, senior pastor at your church? Well, that's a great question, Rich. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, what we do is my pastor and I, we sit and have regular meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of times you'd be surprised about the leaders who don't even meet with their leader. <laughs> right. Just give give orders and, and that's it. But we, we sit and we meet together so that I can understand his heart, mm -hmm. he can understand my heart. And in doing so, he's able to articulate his vision in such a way that I clearly understand it. Mm -hmm. If I don't understand it, there's no way that I can help others understand the vision. Mm -hmm. So once I understand it, then I take that vision and I try to make it relevant and palatable to those to which uh, I, I lead. Mm -hmm. so, and I can say, okay, men's ministry, this is what the vision means for you. Women's mm -hmm. ministry, this is what the vision means for you. And then helping them to plug in so that ultimately, um, as we have a quarterly quarter system, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, mm -hmm. each quarter we can check in and make sure that the vision is being realized. Mm, very cool. Yeah. Now, how, how often do you and your senior, your pastor meet? What does that look like? What's the rhythm look like there? We meet every week. Okay. Actually, every other week. Okay, great. And is that what, like for an hour, two hours? What does that typically look like? And is that, how much does that get spread spread between, say, current tactics, like what's coming up this weekend or close, and then long range, kind of where are we headed? It's it's about 30 minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a healthy balance between current issues, hot button issues, and where we're headed. Uh, there are times in which we'll set aside a special meeting just for where we're headed. Hey. This is what I'm thinking. This is what the Lord is saying. Uh, this is what we, this is what I want you to join me in prayer about, so that we can come together and see what it is uh, that God is saying for our ministry. Nice. Then, um, then on the other side, as you trickle down, how often do you meet with your team? How do you ensure that they, you know, are on board with that? What does that look like? We also meet on the other uh, weeks. Okay, so, great. Yeah. So it's uh, I meet with uh, my leader, my pastor on let's say the first and third week. Then I meet with uh, my team on the second and fourth week. Mm -hmm. They're called general overseers, wherein I'm able to articulate the vision that I've been given, mm -hmm. talk about it, we mull over it, and then you know we kick it around and then go from there. Very cool. Can you think of a time where there maybe was, um, you know, a particularly, you know, a, maybe a challenging time to roll out, um, you know, a piece of the vision and what you had to do to ensure that that it, you know, was being understood and then ultimately implemented in the team? Can you give us a sense of what, what time like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's an assumption that um, 
because Mount Zion is such a large church that, I mean, we have just a tree in the backyard that you can just pull money from. <laughs> anyone knows who, who does ministry at any level that it takes money to do ministry. And I remember specifically a time wherein um, the world, the, the country experienced somewhat of a recession where mm -hmm. jobs, were effect, jobs were affected and people literally were, you know, wondering, okay, how am I going to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul? So that mm -hmm. affected the church as well. So we went through a period where uh, a lot of our ministries wanted to do various things to implement the vision, to, to, to go on, to make sure that the senior pastor's vision was realized. But I had to talk to them and say, okay, um, we're going we're gonna to do the vision, but we have to pull back just a little bit mm. because we need to make sure that all of our resources, all, all, our, all of our pistons are hitting. Yes. Pistons are firing. And currently, because of where we are, according to this recession that the world is saying, mm -hmm. all of our pistons are not yet firing. Mm. So the challenge was getting everybody to realize, yes, we are going to do it, but we have to step back and do it methodically and strategically. Mm. Now, so th the thing that obviously can be a difficulty with an executive pastor role is you're sometimes caught between the vision and then actually get making it happen, which obviously a part of what you described there in a scenario when, you know, you're you're having to make some decisions, some calls between departments that are either that what they are wanting to do is getting funded, other departments, there are things, you know, maybe aren't getting funded. How do you balance those out? How do you make those decisions? First of all, like how do you prioritize, but then also how do you kind of work that out and ensure that people are all along with you as you march towards, um, you know, what, do you believe, what you believe God's calling your church to? One of the things that I believe that has been incredibly beneficial in doing that mm -hmm. uh, is having these regular meetings with my team, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, wherein all of the team members are around the table and we talk about uh, various uh, programs and events that's coming up so that everybody has the benefit of hearing everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. So if there's an event, let's say that we have to pull back on or one ministry can't do it because another ministry is going to do it, we explain why in that meeting. Uh, I have my CFO there, he explains, okay, this is where we are financially, you know, I'm there, I explain, this is where we are from a vision perspective that way everybody understands and i my role is to reaffirm yes you're going to do it but i just have to push you back to maybe the third quarter mm -hmm. the fourth quarter in order to get it done very cool very cool well anything else you want to kind of share about you know implementing the senior pastor's vision uh before we move on with the rest of the episode you know i think uh, rich i think it's, it's as an executive pastor you just have to do it intentionally mm -hmm. and, do it, uh, let it be organic in terms of not force it. But if you understand what the vision is, then it's easy to uh, funnel it down and, and, and make it palatable for other people. This is the Unseminary Podcast. Stuff you wish they taught in seminary. Well, we're going to jump onto the lightning round. That's the part of the episode where uh, we ask the similar questions of everybody that's on the show today. We're super uh, privileged, honored to have Pastor Daryl from Mount Zion Baptist Church with us in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, you know, Pastor, is there any kind of online resources you're using these days that are particularly helpful in your ministry? Yes, worshipplanning.com. Okay, nice. Tell me about that. Worshipplanning.com is a, an amazing online uh, service, and I encourage every ministry, if you're watching, to check it out. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, it helps us organize our services with what we call precision timing. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows exactly what they're doing, what time they're doing it. We know what time church starts, and we know what time church ends. That way, there's no, it takes the guesswork out of, now what's next, and who's right, doing right. this? So it just organizes our services. Now, why it's been beneficial for us is that we're able to organize our services way in advance. So if we have a, a New Year's Eve service, we're able to plan it today, give everybody the information that, so that nobody's uh, wondering what's going to happen on that service. Very cool. So worshipplanning.com, that's a great, uh, a great resource for sure. Uh, any books you've read in the last, I don't know, say six months to a year that's having an impact on your, your thinking or ministry? Yeah, Leadership on the Line uh, mm -hmm. by uh, Ronald Heifetz and Marty Lindsay. Okay. An amazing book. Uh, what's been good about that? What spoke to you in that? Well, he talks about um, the danger of leadership and how anytime you, you present or deal with conflict, um, it's dangerous. You're mm -hmm. perceived as a danger, mm -hmm. perceived as, um, in some respects, a threat. Mm -hmm. He continues in the book by talking about how when you're in the midst of a conflicting situation, that you're on the dance floor. You're in the midst of the minutia. You're in the midst of uh, the issue, the problem. But he encourages you to get on the balcony. Mm -hmm. You go to the balcony if you have you go to church if you're in the balcony you can see the sanctuary in a greater uh, from a greater perspective you can see 
pit, you can see the organ, preacher, all of that. Mm. So when you get on the balcony, it allows you to see your situation uh, from a greater perspective with an objective lens mm. versus being tainted by what's going on around you. Very cool, very cool. What's another ministry you're looking at these days that's uh, kind of inspiring you? Willow Creek. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, Willow Creek uh, in Illinois, mm -hmm. an amazing ministry. Very cool. And if you could get 15 minutes lit with any leader alive, who would you want to get that with and, and why? Uh, ironically, it's the pastor of Willow Creek. Okay, right, nice. Yeah, Bill Hybels, right? Yeah, Bill Hybels. Great. Yeah, he, he's a, a phenomenal leader. He, mm -hmm. of course, uh, is the founder of the Global Leadership Summit. Mm -hmm. it takes place uh, every year. His, his um, tactics of leadership, his ability to lead uh, multiple uh, churches at one time and, and staffs mm -hmm. is just phenomenal to me. Mm, very cool. That's great. Um, well, I'm sure leading at Mount Zion obviously takes a lot of time. When you're looking just to kind of kick back and relax, kind of enjoy enjoy life a little bit, what do you, what do, you do to have fun? Um, well, this is going to seem crazy, Rich, but uh, honestly, just sitting sitting on the couch watching a movie. Nice. No, that's good. That's good. That's great. Well, Daryl, I really appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you so much for taking time out uh, from your schedule to be with us. If people want to get in touch with you or with the church, what's the best way to do that? The best way is I'm on every social media platform. Uh, I would encourage you to follow me. I am Tala Farrell. I am T-A-L-I-A-F-E-R-R-O. Or email me at dtelefero at mountzionnashville.org. And I'll definitely be a blessing to you uh, in any way that I can. Nice. Yeah, I got a chance to watch some of your YouTube videos. I really liked them. I thought they were, uh, they were great. Really cool, for sure. I appreciate that. Thanks so much. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much, Rich. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Don't be shy. We'd love to connect. Check out Unseminary Inbox. You can sign up at unseminary.com and we'll send you helpful training resources every week. Plus, you'll gain immediate access to our exclusive members area with tons of resources you can use. Connect with Rich on Twitter at Rich Birch or through email rich at unseminary.com Don't forget to check out the show notes for this episode at unseminary.com It includes links to what we talked about today and more. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Did you enjoy today's episode? Drop by iTunes and leave a review. Thanks again for tuning in to this week's Unseminary podcast. Join us next week when we'll learn more stuff we wish they taught in seminary.